Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see how to design car park ventilation system for a practical high-rise building project. When it comes to car park ventilation system, most of the time you can see people simply show a 10 by 10 square box for example and multiply with the air change per hour to size the fan flow. But practically saying, you need to consider few important points like you see here, there will be uh, in some projects, there will be multiple uh, basement will be there, so there will be multiple ramp area will come so the question will come to your mind that should i consider all this ramp area also for the calculation and also practically saying in the car park there will be plenty of buildings plenty of rooms will come like a fire pump room water supply pump room and also the lobby area and the lift shop like you see here there will be different rooms will come so the question will come that should i consider all these rooms in the uh, calculation or not so with this plenty of question we need to solve uh, to exactly size the design so in this video we will, we will see all the practical difficulties and how to design a proper car park ventilation system for the project. Simply saying, in the car park system, we have the exhaust duct and makeup air duct. For example, if you see in this image, so here you can see there is a makeup air lower is there. From the air lower, we have the makeup air fan. I mean, this is the this is the fan which is supply the fresh air to the system. I mean, from the different basement like this. And similar to this makeup set, we have the exhaust arrangement also. In the exhaust arrangement, you can see that smoke exhaust grill which collects all the smoke exhaust uh, from here through the duct and also which which throw the air outside using the excess air lower so this is the simple understanding of car park ventilation system and in car park ventilation system, we have carbon monoxide sensor or CO sensor which shall monitor the carbon concentration level and adjust the ventilation system to keep the space under the required value most of the cases, it is recommended to have minimum two mode of fan running like normal mode and fire mode. So when the system is in the normal condition, it will run with a normal speed. When it reaches the fire mode, the fan will go with the fan will go with a higher speed. In some civil defenses, they they allow they allow to proceed with the three modes also. For example, in the normal mode, it will be three air change per hour. Also, CO ventilation mode, it will go with six air change per hour, and also the fire mode, it will go with ten air change per hour. So overall, the fresh air will be 85 percentage of makeup air making it to maintain the negative pressurization in the car park ventilation so now we will see one simple example first then we will go for the practical difficulties so for example we have a basement in the car park building has an area of 2185 square meter and 6.125 ceiling height which makes a total volume of the car uh, basement is 13383.125 meter cube so now we will have three three type of uh, modes here so like you see here in the normal mode i have considered the air change per hour and also we i have mentioned the exhaust fan flow here supply air flow here and also coming to CO ventilation mode it is with the six air change per hour and also fire mode it is with the 10 air change per, uh, 10 air change per hour so here you can see the value now. So first I have considered three air change per hour. So in this case, the excess fan flow comes from 11553 liter per second. So now in the first case, we can see that the total volume is 13383.125 for that area. And I multiply with the three air change per hour for the normal mode. So this is the, the answer comes in meter cube per hour because we are multiplying with the air change per hour. So it is in hour and also here the volume is in the meter cube. So the answer comes here in meter cube per hour. So this meter cube per hour, you can convert to liter per second. So you can get 111. Uh, 52.6 liter per second so the same value i have considered here this is for the exhaust when it come to supply i told you that we normally consider uh, as a negative pressurization so i consider 85 percentage of the exhaust as a so supply so 11153 multiply with this 0.85 so i consider 85 percentage of the excess as a supply so here you can see 9480.05 so i round off to 9481 as a normal mode when it comes to co mode i have considered six air change per hour the answer is quite similar what we did for the three air change per hour so 13383.125 multiply with the six air change per hour you will get the answer in meter cube per hour so here you can convert the same to liter per second 8298 so i can i will add here 8298 so you will get the answer of around 22305 liter per second and similar to this one i have converted the i have calculated the fresh air flow that means 0 0.85 85 percent of the exhaust so it is 19959 i mean i round off to 1890 so similarly you can find out the fire mode value with also uh, 10 exchange per hour so this is very simple so now we will discuss about some practical issues 
so here finally we have a, a very big project uh, with uh, two basement so for example we have a high rise building this is a high rise building project and this is the ground level and below ground level we have basement 1 and also basement 2 so this is the basement 1 and this is the basement 2 so this is the ground level and also we have plenty of floors so for all this one we have the uh, car park so i am uh, this drawing is the basement 1 drawing i mean uh, we are at this level so above this level we have open to sky means uh, you can see this ramp area so which is going to the outside so this is going to the uh, ground level so open area and uh, if you follow this route this level, this level will go to basement 2 so still we have one more car parking below that one that's the basement 2 so first the very important thing is uh, we need to find out uh, how we need to know how to get the proper area so here uh, you can see some some uh, fixed structures for example here you can see one soft is there uh, here also we have another soft and also there are multiple softs are there this one and this one and here also you can see and here so whatever the softs uh, which is coming here we don't need to consider for the area calculation and uh, we, we can avoid the some important rooms also for example you can see here domestic irrigation pump room uh, domestic tank i mean the water supply tank this is the irrigation tank this is the entrance area this is the lift this is the lift soft and also we have the vip lift so this is the lobby area and the garbage chute room lift lobby so there is a waste storage room there are plenty of rooms are there we don't need to consider this type of enclosed space when you go for the calculation of area so how we then how we will measure the area so for example i will start from uh, this point so for example i'll take like this for the area measurement i we need to go like this then going here again we need to go like this so i'll go here because i don't need to consider the pump room so i don't need to include that area so i'm going like this and when i go here you see this is the parking area so i want to include this one also so i go here i take like this so i will go straight like this i have to avoid all this area because this is the enclosed space i don't need to consider so then again i am going here because i want to include all this uh, parking area in my calculation i am going here and again here so here we have we can go here like this we can go here and when it comes to the ramp area uh, actually from this part we you can you know that normally this is the open area so i don't want to include all this open area like this this is not required so what i have to do from this point i have to go like this then from here i have to go like this then i have to consider the same opening uh, i mean the car parking zone only so i will go like this and when it comes to this one i told you this area is going to the basement too so this ramp area uh, which is going to basement 2 i must consider in my calculation so that area i have considered in the basement 2 so for the basement 1 what i have did is when i come to this one i have taken like this i have moved forward like this so this ramp area from here to here which is going to the basement 2 i have to include in the basement 2 also so again so this will go for the basement 1 it will go like this sorry this will go straight away so i mean we have to take it straight away like this straight away like this and here we have the staircase we don't need to include that area we can go further like this and here after coming this one there is a storage room we don't need to include that one so we can go further like this so now you got the full area i mean the proper area from here you can avoid this soft area you can take the area length and width and you can avoid this area so finally you will get a very clear area first of all we need to understand this practical difficulty how to measure the area correctly so as I told, now we measured the area. So this ramp area, this is going to the ground level, which is this is coming from the ground level, and which will go to this parking area. And after also you can see the drive away. So if you follow this drive away, this will uh, down to basement two. I mean this is going to basement two. So now I will open the basement two drawing also. So from basement one, now this is the basement two drawing. So here you can see up to basement one. That means if you follow this drive away, this will go to the basement one here, and in the top level we have the basement one so same like basement one you also need to measure the area properly as i told you can properly follow uh, this method you can avoid all these enclosed rooms under the lift soft everything as i told for the basement one you can also measure the basement two area and in the basement two additionally you know that uh, this basement two we have to include this ramp area also because this ramp is the closed surface uh, closed area when it comes to basement one it is going to the uh, uh, means the, to the open to sky so that's why we didn't include that area but when it comes to basement two basement two we have to include the ramp area also for the calculation.
So now we have uh, cleared some points. Uh, lobby area we didn't measure. No tanks, pump room, and other enclosed room. We avoided all this one from the area calculation. No lift to sub consider. Uh, minimum distance between two exhaust of fresh air grill five meter. So this is based on the practical ideology. I'm telling practical idea. For example, here we have to provide the fresh air and the exhaust grill at a different location to for the proper uh, ventilation. So normally you can see the, the here we have the car parking zone. So the the C wall level uh, mainly it will comes from the car parking area so we normally keep the exhaust grill i mean the return grill uh, in this area uh, for the different car parking so there are some arrangement which i normally keep which i normally suggest for you to keep uh, the exhaust grill at a different different location so let me show you how to do that one so based on the personal experience in between every two or three cars one grill is required consider the site condition for uniform placement this will make the removal of air properly or air will be accommodated in each place so i will show you one example how to do uh, this one for example uh, here you can see this uh, there is a car park area different car park areas are here so as i told you every two to three cars in between you can place one exhaust grill for example here we have uh, three arrangements so here i can place one exhaust grill in the top of that one and uniformly if i want to place i want to place in the next one in the center again next one in the center so again next one in the center here so again here in the center so like this the top of the uh, top of the car so we can keep the exhaust grill in the uniform manner like normally i keep two to three cars in between i keep the exhaust grill so this will be a proper order like this so sometime what happens some people are ke keeping the exhaust grill in the vertical column also for example if i make the section drawing it will be like this so if you have one uh, structure here just for example so we are taking the duct like this we are taking it down and here we are placing the exhaust grill so here the car car parking will be there so this is also one of the effective way uh, for the exhaust grill placement so here for example in our project you can see i'll show you that one also so we have the column located in the proper interval so here one two three four five six like this so in this column also you can make the exhaust grill as i told now so this is also one of the acceptable method otherwise as i told you you can place the exhaust grill in the center of the uh, every two to three cards in the proper manner so now we discuss how to place the exhaust air grill uh, for example here different exhaust air grill we discuss and if you are placing exhaust air grill in the parking area and near to the area you can see the driveway so in the driveway in the top of that one you can place the fresh air similar to this area, this side also you can see there are different parking areas are there so if you place the exhaust grill following this method and you can place the fresh air grill in this one so like this way you can place exhaust and the fresh air for uh, car parking so in addition to this one, uh, you can see these notes also. So guidance on the best practice for ducted mechanical exhaust system can be found in this standard, British standard 73467-2013. So here what they have mentioned, if you go to 8.1.5, extra points should be arranged so that 50% of the exhaust capacity is at a high level and 50% is at a low level and evenly distributed over the old car park. So this is one of the important information uh, I have taken from uh, 73. 346 British standard hello friends one minute we work so hard to collect all the information from various sources to give you best understanding of the subject most of the people watch the video but they don't subscribe please motivate us by subscribing our channel to post more and more technical videos for you thank you and also regarding air change per hour you can note down this point from the same standard so for basement or enclosed car park stories mechanical ventilation should be provided with at least six air change per hour in addition wherever cars could queue in the building with the engines running example at the exit and ramp area provisions should be made for local ventilation rate of at least 10 air change per hour so here they have highlighted six and ten air change per hour so but when it comes to different civil defense for example qatar civil defense uae and different thing uh, most of the countries in the middle east they recommend uh, 6 and 10 air change per hour for the car park ventilation 6 is for the normal mode and 10 is for the fire mode so as mentioned here you can follow this concept otherwise as i shown uh, based on my understanding and knowledge uh, this is what i normally follow as i explained excess grill i keep over the car and fresher grill i keep in between the driveway for the proper uh, air circulation 
So here we can see one Excel file. For example, based on the area measurement, if you got um, like for example, let's say 1,500 square meter area, and the height, the car park height is 4.8 meter, then the total volume is 7,200 meter cube. So normal mode 6 yard change per hour I have followed, and for the fire condition uh, 10 yard change per hour I have considered. So it will be like I have converted to liter per second uh, from meter cube per hour. So it is 12,000. Uh, liter per second at a low speed and uh, 20,000 liter per second at a high speed. This is for the excess fan. As I told you, 85% of the excess will be fresh air. So I have multiplied with the 0.85. So you get the answer for the fresh air fan. So this is how we uh, we can we find out the uh, area and how we find out the fan capacity and what are the practical thing we consider. For example, as I told that uh, we should avoid the uh, pump room at different rooms. So these are the practical thing you consider when you go for the design. And in some cases, we provide the jet fan also in the car parking area. But if you have jet fan, mostly it is recommended to have the uh, CFD analysis uh, to properly place the fan and to find out some other parameters also. So this is one of the important thing. So thank you for watching the video. We will see you again with another interesting topic. Thank you.